Saddam was not the only developer of weapons of mass destruction. Libya had a program. North Korea was trying to obtain nuclear technology. The network of the Pakistani scientist A.Q. Khan was an active proliferator of such technology, and Iran's program had begun. But only one regime had actually used such weapons, that of Saddam. Intelligence still valid indicated al-Qaeda wanting to acquire such material, and 9-11 showed that they were prepared to cause mass casualties. So it's important, now that we're here 15 years after 9-11, to recall the atmosphere at that time. America had never suffered such an attack on its own soil before. Its population were devastated. They regarded themselves at war. The Taliban, who had given sanctuary to al-Qaeda, had been removed from power in Afghanistan in November 2001. But the 2002 Bali bombings, in which over 200 victims, mainly Australians, lost their lives, showed the continuing threat. So I asked people to put themselves in my shoes as prime minister. Back then, barely more than a year from 9-11, in late 2002 and early 2003, you're seeing the intelligence mount up on WMD. You're doing so in a changed context of mass casualties caused by a new and virulent form of terrorism. You have at least to consider the possibility of a 9-11 here in Britain. And your primary responsibility as prime minister is to protect your country. These were my considerations at the time. the lead up to war. There was no rush to war. The inquiry rightly dismisses the conspiracy th theory that I pledged Britain unequivocally to military action at Crawford, Texas in April 2002. I did not and could not, as they explicitly in their report conclude, 